Just in case no one believes me when I say that I went to watch this movie, here's the absolute proof that I saw it. And I do have an eyewitness to seeing the movie because I saw it with my friend Artistic Passion. I'd like to say that the best part of the movie was that I got to see it with a close buddy. So anyway, the Emoji Movie was released a long while back, and ever since then it has been hated by everyone. People were calling it a cheap cash grab by Sony and accusing it of being the reason why the Popeye movie was cancelled. Which is actually a misconception since there are reasons why the Popeye movie was cancelled that have nothing to do with the Emoji movie. But it was still getting hated regardless all the way up to the movie's release a couple of weeks ago. And needless to say, the reviews have been less than tasteful. Everyone has been hating on it so far, calling it one of the worst animated movies to come out. And it's currently the lowest animated movie on Rotten Tomato. With all of this going on, I have to say that my interest was peaked. And I went to see the movie just to see how bad it could have possibly been. Which leads me to asking, is the Emoji movie really that bad? And my answer to that is no. It's not one of the worst animated movies out there. I wouldn't even say that it's the worst movie to come out in 2017. At least, not at this time. But it was definitely an underwhelming experience, and this video is going to talk about why. So, the movie is about this secret world that lies in our phones, and there's this city called Textopolis where all of the emojis live. There's this meh emoji named Jean who's capable of expressing multiple emotions, which isn't allowed because emojis are meant to express one single emotion. He's given a chance to work in the cube where all of the emojis are stationed when the owner Alex is using it to send a message. Jean of course ends up making the wrong face, which causes Alex to think that there's something wrong with the phone. Frustrated about not being able to fit in, Jean sets out on a journey with high five and jailbreak so he can be reprogrammed and properly act like a meh. While that's going on, there's a couple of other subplots too. Gene's parents go out looking for him, the smiler emoji tries to have Gene deleted because they think he's a malfunction, and there's Alex who's gonna have the phone deleted because he thinks there's something wrong with it. Now the first problem with the movie is its pacing. It has a hard time maintaining balance between these four subplots which results in a lot of scenes being too fast or too slow. This is especially a problem with the climax as it happens way too quickly. It makes the movie as a whole feel like a very badly constructed mess. And there's also a lot of times where the background stuff feels really distracting. The opening scene is riddled with all of these message bubbles popping up while the characters are talking, and it just gets in the way of the story that it's trying to tell. Some of it doesn't even make sense, like they make a quick statement about how Alex has a social security number. What kind of 14-year-old freshman in high school has a social security number? Is it because they just did it for a quick joke? If that's the case, it definitely wasn't funny. And speaking of not being funny, the movie's comedy is so annoyingly bad. People may say that humor is supposed to be subjective, but there is nothing that anyone can possibly say that will even remotely justify the absolute laziness in this movie's comedy. They go for the most effortless and typical jokes that you can possibly make with this setup. The first major joke that they use for this movie is that they come across these monkey emojis and they say that they're busy doing monkey business. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because they're monkeys and they're doing monkey business, haha. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, all of the movie's jokes are like this. They're just stereotyping the emojis in some way. There's no sense of energy put into any of it, it all just feels incredibly lazy. I mean, they have this poop emoji voiced by Patrick Stewart, who literally does nothing but make poop jokes. Jokes. I mean it, every single time this character is on screen or when he opens his mouth, they make some kind of toilet humor. And it's just about as repetitive and forced as you'd think it would be. What makes it even worse is that it's a complete waste of Patrick Stewart's talent. I mean, the guy was literally just in Logan. You'd think he would know better than to say yes to this script. What made him think for a moment that this movie was worth his time? There's also these completely forced product placements in the movie concerning Candy Crush Saga and Dance Dance Revolution. They try to make them important in the story by having the characters go through obstacles and trials while in these areas, but they just feel far too gimmicky. And they're not utilized in a way that makes them feel like anything more than a cheap advertisement. They don't even do anything interesting with the concept of the film. The movie revolves around this idea of an entire secret world being hidden within your phone. And and it doesn't do anything to take advantage of this idea. They don't put enough time or effort into exploring the worlds hidden within these apps. And even when they do try exploring the apps, it's just too gimmicky to be memorable. 
The movie just focuses on this boring adventure with Gene and his parents and his friends. It wouldn't have bothered me so much if they actually managed to make the characters interesting. And they really don't. Gene is the hero who feels like he's being outcasted in his society because he's different from everyone else. And he wants to find a way to be like everyone else so he can finally fit in. And of course he goes through this life-changing journey where he learns that being yourself is the best that you can be. This type of character has been done a lot in other stories, but to be fair, there have been stories that use this character in an interesting way. I'd even say that there are stories who have used this character amazingly. Unfortunately, Gene is not one of those instances. The movie is too straightforward with his character, which makes him very one note. They try to make him interesting, but they just don't put enough time into developing his growth which results in him failing to make a connection with the audience. And by the end of the movie, the character doesn't feel like he evolved or changed in some way. I guess he does learn his lesson about being himself, but it's still not done in a way that makes him feel any more relatable. And that's the problem with Gene as a protagonist. He just doesn't feel relatable. His character is too one note to be interesting and too underdeveloped to make an attachment with the audience. He's just a less interesting version of Ralph from Wreck-It Ralph. High Five is the dumbass sidekick. Yeah, there's really nothing to his character except that he's just the dumbass sidekick. They tried to give him an interesting background in which he was this popular emoji who went through a fall from grace, but the movie doesn't do anything with his character to make that connection feel deserved. He's annoying, he gets the other characters into trouble, and he doesn't even have an interesting personality. He is simply the dumbass sidekick. Jailbreak is the rebellious princess. Yeah, I know I spoiled the movie by saying that she's a princess, but I really don't think I'm giving anything away when I say that. I don't even think it matters since it was so obvious that anyone could have figured it out. She doesn't want to live in the phone because she's sick of all the rules that go on in there. She wants more out of life despite being a princess. And yeah, tell me that Disney isn't gonna sue this movie for this character type. She has the same problem as Jean in which the movie is too straightforward with her character to make her three-dimensional. And the things that they do with her princess identity are just about as stereotyped as the rest of the emojis. The romance between her and Jean is so bland and so forgettable that you completely forget that they were even in a relationship by the end of the film. Maybe that's not what they were going for and they just meant for them to be friends, but the movie doesn't really make that clear. The rest of the characters are so one note and so forgettable that there really is no one else to complain about. But as uninteresting and annoying as the characters can get, that's not really the movie's main problem. The main problem with the Emoji movie is that it doesn't create a story. It leeches off of other ones. It takes a bunch of story elements from more popular movies, translates them in a much less interesting way, and crams them into one huge mess while hiding it behind a gimmick, without any kind of understanding as to what made those other movies good in the first place. People tend to use the it's a ripoff argument or the it's using something from another movie argument quite a lot, and it's usually annoying when that happens. I don't like using that criticism personally because of how lazy and how easy it is to use, but in this case, I mean no exaggeration when I say that the Emoji Movie is just copying Wreck-It Ralph, the Lego Movie, Inside Out, and some Disney movies to an extent. But even putting that aside, the story still isn't good due to its boring tone. There's little to no conflict within the story, and the movie needed this to create a sense of tension. This sense of tension was needed to make it more interesting to the audience. And because it's missing that tension, it makes the adventure that these characters are going on feel a lot less engaging. And that's not including all of the obvious plot holes and confusing questions that you'll be asking yourself throughout. For example, they talk about deleting Gene because they think he's a malfunction. Okay, so how the hell do you even delete an emoji? Is it even possible to delete an emoji? Did that ever happen in the history of technology? And for that matter, how was Alex too nervous to send a message to Addie if he was obviously able to get to know her enough to get her phone number? He must have talked to her before, so why is he having such a hard time doing it now? Dude, you have her fucking number. You don't even have to send an emoji or any kind of message. Just give her a call. Also, why don't 
don't they go around the apps instead of going through them? It's shown that they can do that, and it would have taken a lot less time for them to get to their destination. I guess it's because we wouldn't have had that forced Dance Dance Revolution advertisement if they did that. And then we find out that Gene is able to express other emotions because it was passed down to him from his father. So according to the Emoji Movie, emotions are a gene, or some kind of DNA code. That is so convoluted and nonsensical that it's hurting my brain just thinking about it. And if Jailbreak is supposed to be the princess, does that mean that her parents are the king and queen of the emoji world? And if so, why is Smiler in charge of everything? But by far, the biggest bullshit in the entire movie is its ending. Okay, it starts with Alex going to the store to have his phone deleted. Okay, first off, that's not how it works. What would have happened is that the phone would have gone through a factory reset. It wouldn't have deleted the phone itself. What makes this especially bad is that it completely contradicts the rules of the movie's universe. The film obviously revolves around this secret world that lies within our phones. But the way that the movie gets this information wrong clearly shows that the filmmakers didn't do any research on the thing that they wanted the film to be about. The only thing worse than that is how they saved the phone from getting deleted. It happens because Alex just unplugs it from the machine at the last possible microsecond. And not only that, it completely restores the phone 100%. Um, no. Just no. Did anyone who was working on this film recognize what was wrong here? You don't need a scholarship in computer technology to understand that this is not how it works. Anyone with a fifth grade education can tell you that this is not how it works. But what makes it even worse than that is when you really think about it, everything that the emojis go through in order to stay with Alex is going to be rendered pointless. If there's anything that I know about phones is that they're always getting replaced. So this ending where they convince Alex to keep them will ultimately ultimately be for naught since he's just gonna get rid of them eventually anyway. This ending is just so bad that it's literally on Mass Effect 3's level, where it doesn't feel like anything that the characters go through even matters by the end of the story. That is how bad it is. Even the concept of the movie itself feels more like an excuse for a movie instead of an actual movie, and the concept is not executed in a way that makes it memorable on any level. I heard in an interview somewhere that this is supposed to be the fastest produced animated movie in history, and I think that actually explains all of the movie's problems. If the movie really was as rushed as they say that it was, it means that they put no thinking into developing the characters or making the story consistent. It could be because Sony just wanted to rush this movie out of the door in order to get money from people as quickly as possible. Maybe this would result in the movie not having such an expensive budget, but that doesn't mean it's gonna make a whole ton of money back. As for the animation, I've seen so Sony animated movies with a more intriguing style and much more interesting design. The backgrounds do look nice to an extent, but the character designs are very uneven and uncanny. The only good thing to come out of this movie is this Instagram scene where Jean's parents make up. They travel into this album featuring Alex's family memories of traveling to France, and it shows Jean's father opening up to his mother and revealing his inner emotions, explaining how he kept them bottled up inside and how he was afraid of showing them. Unlike all of the other scenes, this one feels like it was paced properly, and the conversation between Jean's parents feels organic. It feels like a conversation between two parents who are going through some problems. There's an actual sense of emotion between these two, and it puts actual effort into creating a connection with the audience. It even has some music to make the scene more interesting to watch, and the atmosphere fits appropriately with the tone that the scene is setting. I honestly didn't expect anything good to come out of this movie, and knowing that this movie got across something that was actually good is quite impressive. But even if it is a good scene, it just doesn't make the rest of the movie worth sitting through. So yeah, this movie is definitely a bad movie, but it's not as bad as everyone may be making it out to be. It's not even one of the worst animated movies out there. I've seen animated movies with much more horribly told stories and much more horribly written characters than this. It's not insufferably bad, it's just the basic boring kind of bad with the occasional plot holes and bad writing. By the end of all this, I guess I could say that the Emoji Movie is bad in an interesting way. I'm not saying that the movie is so bad that it's good, I'm just saying that it interested me to see just how bad it could possibly be.
This movie for the most part gave me exactly what I thought I was going to get, which I suppose did play a factor in me not finding it as bad as everyone else. Plus, it did have that Instagram scene, so it's nice to know that the movie had something good going for it, which is more than I can say for Norm of the North, which was so obviously a shameless cash grab shit show. For now, I'll just leave this commentary as it is and say that the movie is bad, but not nearly as bad as you think it would be. Maybe if you're just curious enough, you could rent it for a couple of dollars when it comes out on DVD. I also want to take this moment to apologize to fans of my content because I have been slow on pony-related stuff and reviews. I just got back from my vacation in Wisconsin, and I'm still trying to settle myself in. I am going to get back on track by reviewing the two episodes that came out in America last week. And after that, I'm going to review the new episode that's coming out this Saturday. There's still the issue with my 2016 movie reviews, and considering everything that's happening, I think I'm going to have to postpone that for another week. But until then, take care of yourselves and have a great day. Misanthropony, over and out.